So, today's video, what's up guys? Um, it is Monday again. Well, today's video is a little bit, it's a little treat for you guys. Um, I thought I would do a video talking about these Honey Jolies. Um, again, today, obviously, I wanted to talk more about Jonathan. So, there's a lot of reasons why I say the guys are creep. You know, it's, it's just like you see a lot of the things on his channel that kind of make you think that he's a bit of a creep. In all fairness. Um, I mean, obviously, um, I guess there are a few positives that I can say for Jonathan. Um, so the first, <coughs> well, the <coughs> there's three things that I would say that I like about the Honey Jolies. I guess the one thing I do like is that it feels like they don't focus so much on EAD being trans now. It feels like there's not that's to be honest a bit more of a positive thing is it just feels like there's not so much focus now on ED being trans. Like at one point there used to be so much focus on it, like it felt like it was <clears throat> you know, the main sort of focus point of a lot of the content that Jonathan was putting out on his channel, it felt like a lot of the content he was putting out there did revolve around ED being trans. And I was, I, I you know, I, I did a few videos where I said I wasn't impressed with this. I, you know, there were, you know, I had been, well, I had been quite vocal, um, you know, in saying that Jonathan didn't need to keep posting videos about ED being trans. Um, and I didn't feel like that was really fair on her, um, you know, and it, it, I felt, you know, I was saying that it sort of proved the way that Jonathan was kind of exploiting it, you know, was the fact that he kept making video after, you know, so many videos about it, but he doesn't really make videos about her being trans anymore, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, that he sort of shifted the focus away from that a little bit now, and he doesn't really focus on that so much. But I, feel, I don't think he really needed to focus on it as much as he was. And that's why it's not a bad thing that he sort of shifted his focus away from that. You know, um, so that's positive thing I will say is that, you know, I'm glad that he sort of stopped posting videos that feature the kids, you know, either swearing or flipping the bird. But sadly, at one point, that, again, that was a very common thing. Um, that, well, that seemed to be a very common thing on his channel was Jonathan uploading videos where one of the, his main, main and normally always ED was swearing or flipping the bird in them, or swearing not hussing or flipping the bird in them, and it, I just felt bad for her because it felt like Jonathan was making her look bad by uploading videos which featured her swearing and hussing and all that. And people used to say, oh, well, how do you know she's actually swearing? And I think it was pretty obvious that she was. Uh, because Jonathan used to bleep the words out, and you knew, he, you know, but she was probably swearing, you know. Um, but I do, like, again, I do like the fact that we don't really see too many videos now that feature really swear, and it feels like, again, that's not something that we see so much now, and I think that's not, um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, to say the least, I think it's a pretty good thing that it kind of he sort of shifted away from that sort of thing now, and that we don't see so much of it. Um, the other thing I will say now, maybe he still does this a, a little bit. I don't know, but as far as I'm aware of, um, he's also stopped referring to Amelia as a teenager, which again for me, I I was one of those things that. You know, I just didn't agree with, like, how always used to say, like, I, you know, that was one of the reasons, I, you know, I, I, I really didn't like Jonathan. I felt like that was always one of the, you know, one of those things that made me feel really uncomfortable about him and maybe, you know, and, and made me feel really uneasy uh, with him and also gave me that, you know, bad, gave me that bad opinion of him and gave me that, you know, said, sort of gave me that bad vibe. Um... You know, was the fact that he was always referring to Amelia as a teenager because it always felt like there was a bit of a kind of like a darker reason for why he was doing that. It always felt like there was, like he had a certain intention 
you know, but, you know, there was a way that kind of intention. It, it, rather, there was a way that kind of intention for what you know, for him referring to Amelia as a teenager. It felt like he was doing that to try and attract a certain audience, um, which it probably did. To be fair, um, I mean, <laughs> obviously, going back to the it's swearing, you know, I, I have done it you know, again. Like this is something that I've been. Um, like vote in the videos I've done on it, done in the past on my channel, I had, you know, I have said that, you know, Jonathan didn't need to keep posting video, didn't need to keep posting videos every single day where, you know, his kids were swearing, you know, because I think at one point it did get to the point where it felt like every single YouTube short that Jonathan uploaded was featuring John, you know, featured ED of a swearing or hustling or flipping the bird. And it was just, you know, it got to the point where I think people really had had enough of that and were really kind of getting fed up with that being, a, you know, being a thing in every video. Like, there was just no need for it. And, it, you know, it was like, you know, this is why it's not a bad thing that Jonathan to stop that. And as I said, like, I, you know, I have respect them. You know, for the fact that, you know, they don't really focus so much on it being trans now. Like, again, you know, that's why I just find them a bit comfortable. Um, that's one of the things I do like, you know, is, you know, at least they've sort of, you know, started shifting their focus away, f you know, from ED being trans. You know, at least they don't, you know, that, that's not something they focus on so much now. Um, like, you know, how like, how many will say that those videos always used to be very controversial? You know, some of the comments you used to see on those, on those kind of trans child themed based YouTube shorts were, <laughs> did I say, a little bit kind of bizarre. A little bit, you know, not right, you know. Um, I think, you know, people, I, I, there's probably a lot of people out there, there's probably quite a few, you know, I mean, maybe some of you guys, you know, might be a little bit happier that he's sort of not focusing so much on EDP and trans now, you know, I think that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, I, I you know, I, I, well, I will applaud them for the fact that they've had to turn, you know, sort of, especially Jonathan has sort of turned everything, sort of turned his focus away from that now. Um, so moving on uh, from that, so obviously from what we're focusing more on the negative side of things now. I, I guess for me, one of my biggest issues with Jonathan, uh, what has been one of my biggest issues with Jonathan is definitely the thumbnails he uses. Uh, you know, I, I posted, it was funny, I posted the other week, um, I think it was on the video he posted last Wednesday. Um, I really kind of went off at Jonathan because the thumbnail, I felt the thumbnail he used was quite disgusting. You know, it was quite, you know, it, I felt it was quite inappropriate. And I actually posted a comment saying, there's no, you know, Jonathan shouldn't be using the sort of thumbnails he's using. You know, it's really, you know, they're really inappropriate, you know, this, that and the other. And someone actually responded to my comment and they said, it doesn't matter now. That comment, that response sort of pissed me off a little bit because it's like, you know, to me it feels like it does matter because, you know, those sort of thumbnails that he's using can and will attract a particular type of audience. And, and I think... I think we all know that that is why Jonathan uses fun, you know, he uses these fun notes, is because he's intentionally, you know, he it feels like he's intentionally trying to attract, you know, pedos and child predators to videos of his, you know. Here's another example of one of these many family vlogging parents who don't care about their kids and only really care about money, you know, it can tell. Um, I think, you know, it's it's pretty safe to say that he's another person or, you know, he and Anna or another two people who 
wouldn't be where they are now if it wasn't for that hit. You know, that hit's are the only reason that Jonathan and Anna have achieved as much as, as much success as they have. You know, we all know that Jonathan's channel would be absolutely nothing without those hits. You know, the only reason that that channel has been successful as successful as it has been and now has over one and now has over one million subscribers and actually have now has close to two million subscribers is because of Edie, Amelia, Andrea and Alessia Alessia and Andrea. It's not because of Jonathan because it's like the people really tune really tune into Jonathan's video to watch Jonathan. I don't think so. People, people tune into his videos because they want to watch his, they want to see what the hints are doing and what they're getting up to, you know, and, you know, it's like, I, I think we all know that if the hints weren't in the videos, they wouldn't get nearly, nearly that, they wouldn't get nowhere near as many views as they are getting now, you know. Um, I mean, I don't think it's, it's you know, <clears throat> well, I wouldn't say it's, like, you know, it's unfair to say that. I think it's perfectly true. You know, and I've said this a lot about the Inhams as well. Because, again, it's true. You know, the, you know, her sincere Inham certainly wouldn't be where they are now if it wasn't for Jace, Mila, you know, Esme, Ayla and Isabel. And that's also, like, I should also say Aurora as well. You know, it's just, <clears throat> you know, it's the same argument that can be made for a lot of family vloggers is that they wouldn't be as successful as they have been without their hits. You know, it's, you know, you can say that, you know, the same argument can be made for a lot of family vloggers in that, you know, which is that their hits, you know, <laughs> are the only reason that their channels as you know uh, have achieved the success that they have achieved you know and that, that hits are the only reason why they are where they are and, 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 and are the only reason that they're in the position that they're in you know it's like you know I do feel sorry for a lot of these kids and I, I did feel sorry for ED you know especially when Jonathan was like focusing so much on her being trans like that was one of those things that used to really get to me like I used to think to myself like it just didn't really make like any sense to me why Jonathan was focusing on it so much like it felt like one of those things that Jonathan just didn't really need to be focusing on like I know it probably sounds a bit harsh for me to kind of say that but I genuinely you know, it, it, it was genuinely, I generally, that's how I feel, like, you know, it was just one of those things that didn't need to be focused on as much as it was being focused on at one point, you know, it's like, I, that's one of the only things, probably one of the only things that I do like about Jonathan's channel now, and I do like about the content that he's putting out there is that at least it's not focusing so much on ED being trans now at least there's not too many videos that are being put out there now that relate to ED being trans like I don't see that as a bad thing because you know put, you know mainly because of how controversial those videos were I think it's a good thing that we don't really see them anymore um because of how you know genuinely because of how controversial they are I mean I used to, I you know I can't begin to describe you know, some of the comments that I used to see on those particular videos. You know, the thing is, the thing, the thing about it, right? When they used to post these trans child comments, these trans, these trans child videos, it felt like they, they were posting these trans child videos. Not, it, it felt like, not, it, it wasn't because he wanted to support his child. It felt like it was just here, it was just him sort of retaliating to negative comments that were being posted, that's what it felt like most of the time. Um you know, it's just like I don't know what to say really. I mean it you know like I, I, I definitely do think that Jonathan is somebody that needs, you know, looking into because I think 
you know, he's, he's just somebody that stands out to me. You know, people like, this, this is what I don't get, is how he doesn't stand out to people as being, you know, a Peter Art creep. You know, that's what I don't get. Because he, stand, you know, he stands out to me as being a massive, massive creep. And I know that probably seems a bit horrible to say, but, you know, someone had to say it because it's true. You know, he does stand out as being a massive creep. And, you know, I think... It, it, there's, there's just so many things about him that raise these kind of red flags, you know. He's not the sort of, he's not the decent father people think, you know, people claim he is. It's like, John, it's like, um, you know, Chris and Sarah and him. They're not the decent parents, they may, they may, you know, they're made out to be, but these, at the end of the day, decent parents don't pimp their kids out for pedos on the internet, which is what Chris and Sarah have been doing for the, you know, God, for the past God knows how long. <coughs> it's like, basically, been pimping Esme Ida and Isabella out for all those P for all those pedos on the internet. And in years to come, God forbid if they're still vlogging by that point, it will be a Rara and Mila who are being pimped out for all those pedos on the internet. You know, and it's it, it's disgusting to think and you know, and you think about the amount of money they've made purely from pimping it his out for all those pedos on the internet. It's, it's just shocking, you know, it really is. But I think, you know, with Jonathan, it's very, you know, it's, it's so, a lot of the time it's so blatantly obvious, you know, what his intentions are, you know, what he's trying to do with the sort of content that he's putting out on his channel. Like, it's very clear to see what he's trying to do and, and sort of, you know, what sort of audience, you know, he's trying to appeal to as well. Like, that's the thing. Like, sometimes, I think there's been a lot of times where... You know, it has been very obvious, you know, to see, you know, what kind of audience Jonathan was trying to appeal to. And I think, you know, there's just nothing innocent about him. There's nothing decent about him. You know, I mean, obviously, as I said, you know, I mean, obviously those three things I mentioned, you know, so he debts a few, I guess, you know, he say he debts a few bonus points for the fact that, you know, we don't see those, we don't really see those three things anymore, you know, aka him referring to immediately being trans, uh, him posting videos featuring his swearing, hussing or clipping the bird, and him and him and him posting videos that focus so much on immediately being trans. Those three things, I would say, are the only positive things about Jonathan's channel now, to be fairly honest. Um, but, you yeah, know, those three things are not enough for me to, are not enough, for, you know, to sort of change my opinion of him in general. You know, I don't think my opinion of Jonathan is something that will ever change. I think that I'll always... You know, I have a very negative opinion of what he does. You know, I don't, I can always dislike what he does purely because he's exploiting his children and purely because he's just using his children for money, which is exactly what he's doing. You know, and sadly, it's what a lot of family bloggers are doing. You know, and I just think, you know, something has to be done. Like, something has to change. But it doesn't feel like anything ever is going to change. It doesn't feel like the rules with regards to these parents making money off their kids or being able to make money off their kids is something that is ever going to change. It feels like something that these parents are going to being allowed to do. You know, it's no one's going to stop them from doing that. No one's going to say, to, say, oh, well, you can't do that or, you know, that's not acceptable or that's not appropriate. You know, it's just, like, absolutely ridiculous. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. Like, I wish I'd say I was being like negative about this, but I I don't know. Um, but thank you for watching this video anyway. I'll see you for another video. Uh, maybe a little bit later on today, possibly tomorrow. I'll see you for the next one. Bye.